Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, virtual stitch ins, tutorial videos, and sometimes even book clubs. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. <laughs> Our show to brought to, is brought to you today by our friends at Inmart and QT Fabrics, and you can learn more about them in the link in our show notes. So I know that we have one of our thread kits up here, which is our nifty Christmas thread kit. And um, I will just say that I played with it this week. Like more, you know, we played with Irish threads before, but not, I actually... Aggressively use them. Aggressively use them. And I love it. I know. The metallic is my favorite. It is. It is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it turned out great on some of the stuff that I did. And I think you can check our Instagram to find some of the stuff that I was playing with. Yepers. So, and then, of course, we have this new bundle of QT Speckles. Speckles. Yeah. It's, I don't know if it's a basics line, like it's reorderable, but it's a new line. And it's um, a lot of very fun color mixed in together so even if you want a blue fabric but you still want like a smidge of orange because you want to be like hey orange i see you you're not like my favorite but like i see you i see what you bring <laughs> perfect <laughs> i see what you're doing <laughs> all right so today we're going to be talking about barn quilts and helpful tips for sketching for quilters. We're joined by our quilt Nifty Christmas, and the pattern for this wall hanging is available at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. Okay, so let's dive in. Barn quilts. I know barns. I know quilts. What are barn quilts? <laughs> well, when a barn and a quilt love each other very much. They come together. <laughs> what, do they, what does their baby look like? So <laughs> So did you do any research on this? I did. Oh, okay. When a bar and a quilt come together. No, that was just joke prep. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they're big, like, painted blocks that people hang on their barns or houses or places of business or a building that they own that they think is cool, and they put these big quilted, painted quilt blocks on these barns. It requires a lot of tape it, or just a precision <laughs> brush. Building. I would use tape because I'm not that good at painting. <laughs> I I don't think I would use tape, but See, anyway, you're better than me because <laughs> you know sometimes you I can do a straight line. So, but um, there is a book by uh, Susie Patron pa Perrin Perrin. Yes, sorry Perrin, um, and it's called Gar Barn Quilts in the American Quilt Trail Movement. This actually started in 2001 in Ohio and it was started by Donna Sue Groves and she was from um, Creed West Virginia and her and her mother had moved to um, I think it's Xenia Ohio X-E-N-A Xenia yeah I believe that's, that's correct yeah so they had moved to Ohio and they had this barn on their property and just her she had said to her mother oh my goodness, this looks boring, we should add color to it. And her mother was a quilter. So she came up with this idea of, hey, we should put painted quilt blocks on the barn. And somehow she got hooked up with the Ohio Arts Institute and worked out a project in 20, um, I think it was 2001, where it actually the project actually started. Right. This Pre or this pre part would have been earlier, but um, they worked out a project with the Ohio Art Institute to have 20 barns with quilt blocks on them that and, were painted. And that is the official quilt, barn quilt trail. Yes, that's the start of it. Yeah. It's now at, it kind of trickled on down through the rest oh, of the U.S. Oh, right. So right now, well, I couldn't find, according to the book, I don't have current statistics, but in uh, as of 2011, which was what eight years ago, yeah. there were 120 communities with barn quilts, and it's in 30 states. So, and the reason she did it with the Ohio um, Art Institute was to to attract tourists mm -hmm. to the area and have people drive around and see, you know, the different 
barn quilts and stuff. Now, I, I know there are some suggestions. I don't know that there are any rules about it. No, I don't think there's anything official. It kind of depends on the local area. So right. if an arts council is involved locally, they may have rules right. on, like, how to officially be listed in, you know. But if you just have a hanker in and want to paint a quilt block, like, go on with your bad self. Well, and what <laughs> happened to Susie per- Perron is that she was driving through Katy's, Kentucky, and saw a barn quilt and went, what is that? What is this that I'm seeing? And she got fascinated by it. And I think when I saw her speak, she was literally traveling around the United States in an RV, living in the RV, mm-hmm. and um, documenting barn quilts and going out. I think she's she's taken it upon herself to document all the bar- current barn quilts. And um, she goes around and speaks at guilds. Yeah, because that's how I I had heard of it online before, mm-hmm. and then Susie came and spoke at our guild. Right, um, an interesting lecture, and she had picture. And I think she's a quilter now. I don't think she was a quilter yeah. at the beginning of the whole thing. I think she was kind of like, oh, because when you go to a guild meeting, if you've never been, um, the best thing about a guild meeting is show and tell. Always, mm-hmm. it's always show and tell. It's the best. And the reason it's the best is because you just see all this creativity from all this, you know, from everybody. And I think Susie got blown away by the, I mean, it does get it a little, I know you and I couldn't admit to it, but it may be addictive. <laughs> For when you're looking at quilts. Going, can do that and I, can I can do that. Do that. I, I want that. to try that. I haven't done that. Ooh, that's a good color idea. <laughs> Turns out maybe what I am is a Pinterest board curator and not a quilter. <laughs> <laughs> Pinterest board is kind of like, yeah, show and tell. Virtual. Virtual quilting. show and tell. That and Instagram. So so it's a fascinating story that we've done this. And I know there are barn quilts in this area. And our friend actually had one on her quilt shop. Um, and I know a lot of quilt shops actually add the barn yeah. quilts to them, um, which is Cool. I mean, it makes sense that they would do that. So it's not just a, you know, um, like a random barn out in the middle of yeah. a field. These could be found anywhere. And I know there are some downtown areas that have definitely embraced the whole, you know, I think arts in a community is really seeing a revival too. I know that yeah. the arts in our community um, have, they've got. Well, I think space and it's kind of an ex- teaching space and gallery space and expansion, particularly outdoor art, right? Expanding on just green space of Cults. like, well, yeah, we could have a patch of grass, or we could put in cool interactive art experiences that actually attract people to the space and get them to use it more. Right, like the pianos. There's a community close to us that has pianos in different um, public <laughs> spaces, and some friends of ours painted one. Yeah. I drive through the area that has the turtles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, when did, what did that start with? That didn't start here with the turtles. It started with the cows. Yeah. In some town. I don't remember. Was it out west? Was it Fort Worth? I don't or remember. Or Dallas? Honestly. I know, I know Pigeon Forge and Sevierville and the Smoky Mountain Appalachia area. That They did bears, and that was cute. Yeah, I'm not sure why bears. turtles in our area were not near the ocean, <laughs> where turtles normally... I there's, mean, there's like okay. box turtles and stuff, but... No, because I used to work in that area, okay. and there are snapping turtles in the pond that was in front of my That sounds like building. a great thing to commemorate. It was, yeah. Mean turtles. <laughs> it was mean turtles, and they were eating baby geese. Ooh. This I know, is, it was very sad. It's a this sad is story. Escalated this, quickly. This is not going to <laughs> bring it back around to bird quilts. <laughs> <laughs> so, if one were to make a barn quilt for one's house, right. in terms of scale, we're not talking a normal quilt block. Like, you're not going to make a little 12 inch and like hang it and be like, yay, everyone look. I mean, it depends on how close you are to your neighbors. I don't know the scale. I, I'm guessing they're four or six feet wide I and think tall. So standard plywood comes four foot by eight foot. So you could do two of those boards. Oh, then boards. I think they're eight by eight then. Yeah. That makes sense. For barns. Because those are, you know, set off they're the road pretty a big. Yeah. Do you mean a look? I mean, she I may have look. documented it. may not. I don't know. Um, is there is there a 
So I think for, you know, most suburban neighborhoods, which is, you know, the area that we're in, I think you could do like a four foot by four foot and be cool. And it may not necessarily be paint the piece of wood and hang it up. Like you could just legit paint the side of the house or the barn or the shed or whatever. Yeah, I think that that's true. You can definitely just paint the side of a barn. Eight feet. Okay. Well, a barn quilt is a rec replica of one of those squares painted on plywood, usually eight by eight feet, hung on a building for passerbys to see. There you go. There you go. You can be a passerby. Or a participant. Either way. Or both. Or both. So, yeah, eight by eight, it sounds like. So... Um, Do you think that people are choosing the designs for their blocks based on their local area or just by what they think is neat? I think I've seen both. Yeah. Like, I was driving through um, the Carolinas, and there were a bunch of uh, Carolina lily yeah. little blocks. I was like, well, they're in Carolina. That makes sense. And that's kind of what the block was named. Yeah. Or I don't know that it was invented there, but may have been popularized there. In quilt history. Um, so, yes. And then I've seen people, you know, put double wedding ring on it because they like double wedding rings. Yep. <laughs> they got married in that barn. Okay. <laughs> kind of back to our philosophy. Make what you like. <laughs> Make what you like. Do what you want. Um, so, I think that, yeah, either one. And I think the color is completely up to you and your favorite and there's not rules around this. I have seen some that were painted that were very 3D. So, like, Ooh. they got an art class to do it, and they had some, I know what you're thinking. Yes, um, <laughs> because I just watched it. <laughs> they got an art class to do it, and they, you know, got some 3D aspects in their painting and gave it shading and all that kind of stuff. So I think you can take it to that level. And are you, you can tell them what you're giggling at. So I was giggling because <laughs> Lynn's hometown just was featured on The Great Christmas Light Fight, which aired in the U.S. That's true. As we're filming last week. Last, yeah. Yeah. The, the premiere episode for the most current season. And so in this show, if you're not in the U.S. or familiar with it, different towns kind of get to show off, like, here's our Christmas families, light display. Right. Families. Yeah, sometimes it's a town effort, but mostly it's like it individual is. families. And... Lynn's hometown was featured because yeah. the art teacher from the high mm -hmm. school engages the seniors in his art class in creating kind of these character cutouts. And I think most of them are Disney, but there's a fair number of others. It was, there's okay, like, when I was, because it started when I was growing up. So um, it was whatever was the popular trend that year. Yeah. So like. I saw some Beatles thrown in there. Oh, there it's everything, whatever's the popular trend that year. So And he leaves it up to the art students. Yeah. So what the art students think are popular, too. So, yeah, it's got Disney because whatever Disney movie came out. But it'll have, like, I remember one year the art teacher was also the volleyball coach. And so he had the troll dolls with the hair. Not the movie The Trolls. Back in the 80s when it was trendy for the real, the real troll dolls. And they were playing volleyball. It was super cute. And and what's as a as someone who grew up in that town, um, the last time I saw it was probably seven years ago. I was back home at the time it was being shown. And um, what was cool about it is when you drive through it as someone who's seen it for years, you you're amazed at what's new, but then there's also. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. I remember when that are 30 years old now. So I don't know. So Tim Murphy, who is the art teacher in West Frankfurt, did a fabulous job. And I just thought it was, they, well. I saw the end. Yeah. He didn't win. He did a great job, but they didn't win. He got beat <laughs> by a pirate ship. <laughs> just, right outside Las Vegas. Because oh I've been to gosh. Henderson, Nevada. <laughs> I'm like, the guy built a full size pirate ship in his yard. And like so but Tim's been doing this for twenty or for thirty thirty eight years or yeah. thirty I mean he's been teaching longer than that, but so anyway. So one so, could engage local art talent. To right. That was the point of that was <laughs> local art talent. You know, you get shading or they understand. And it's a great project for them. I mean, a lot of seniors have senior projects that they have to do. Mm -hmm. So that may be interesting, at least in our area, all the seniors are like scrambling at the end of the year because they have to do a senior project 
And I think sometimes it has to be community focused. I think it depends on kind of which the one they choose. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I have seen seniors scrambling around trying to make quilts, and I've seen them. And I think this would be something that you know yeah. maybe you could rope a senior into. Hey. So I got a barn. <laughs> you, can you paint? <laughs> can you paint? Lines? If not, we have tape. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> but they're really cool. So if you're not from the United States and you do want to come here, please do so because we love having visitors. And um, <laughs> that being said, rent a car. Internationals. You may struggle to <laughs> think I'm flying to New York and renting a car. It'll and take I'll, you a while to get out of New York, just going to be honest. <laughs> rent a car. <laughs> and and we don't have mass transportation like Europe. <laughs> Outside of the big cities. Outside of New York, really. Like, what other city? San <laughs> Francisco is pretty okay. San Francisco, D.C. There's three. Don't think Atlanta is going to help you there. Yeah, you can't get to our area. No. With, you could get a like a car Rent rental service. A car. <laughs> and drive on the opposite side of the road than you're used to. <laughs> Depending on where you're from, Lynn. Oh, that's true. Like I'm talking to the English. <laughs> the Brits. <laughs> and the Aussies. And the New Zealanders. <laughs> In Singapore. Do they really? So I, I think it's Singapore. I've been to those three countries I that I mentioned, to a and it, I did have to learn to drive on Japan, the other side. Japan, I believe, because the 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 podcast I was listening to, ninety nine percent invisible, was at one point this country decided we'd really like to import cars from Japan. Japan made all of their cars to drive on the opposite side of the road from us, like on the left side. But this country, and I'm pretty sure it was Singapore, but I could be wrong. So y'all, please comment and correct me if I am. Um, said we could import Japanese vehicles from their secondary ownership market and it would be cheaper for them, but they would now have all these left side driving cars on the right side. So they're like, well, guess we're just going to switch what side of the road we drive on. <laughs> and then the whole country changed and they're like, it was a little dodgy at first, but there weren't any accidents. <laughs> okay, so for me, when I learned how to do it, um, and Fortunately, I know how to drive a stick in the United States, which is the automatic transmission. And if you're right-handed, it's great. If you're right-handed, it makes Not right-handed. sense. right-handed. <laughs> and I'm ambidextrous, so I could do it with my left hand, but doing that, and I had to concentrate a little bit more, and it was, it was not a good... I took the car back. I was like, mm. I'm going to need taxis. <laughs> this is not going to work. So anyway, I failed at that. Failed. <laughs> Big old F. So I think there is, bringing it back to barn quilts. Barn quilts. Um, there is a vibrant Instagram hashtag, barn oh, quilts. Oh, is there? I didn't see. I didn't even look up that. So if so. you look up the hashtag barn quilts on social media, you will more than likely see some. And if... The people making the comment are doing um, lovely favors for their internet counterparts. They will tag the location. So you can see like, oh, I'd like to go see that one. Right. So take a look at that if you want to get some inspiration. Um, I'm sure there is some kind of wacky app. Like in addition to Susie's book, which is great, um, as more of these are being added, I'm sure she's like collecting them, documenting them, websites. There's probably right. a map at some point. Like if you were to make this a road trip of sorts. You right. You certainly do that. Yes, you could. You definitely could. So, and I know I've been in other parts of the country and seen them, but not done a trail. Mm -hmm. So, but it would be fun. Awesome. Very good. Well then. Well, now we're going to take a closer look at Nifty Christmas and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about sketching for quilters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, well. <laughs> so, like, okay. So here we go. Um, are you using sketching when you're doing quilt design, designing blocks, and quilting design? Or just focusing on, like, there's a whole lot of, like, drawing that could be brought in here. It's a very broad topic. <laughs> okay. 
I don't know what you're saying, so rephrase. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, you lost me. All right, I'm listening. So I am used to sketching for quilting design. So like I've got a top. I'm trying to sort out the movement that I want to make to kind of like trace to say like, oh, I want to quilt this design into it. Okay. That to me is where I've done most of my sketching. Okay. But then I started thinking, oh, is this actual like block design or top design? No, no. I was thinking quilting, okay. sketching. But we could talk about block or top design. Because when I do that, like it's graph paper. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> and I was like, is that even sketching? I don't know. Okay, so this, when I said this yesterday, we were talking yesterday about what our topics were going to be. So when I said this yesterday, I was thinking I had just taken that Jamie Wallen class, who is a top quilter in the country in the United States, and does some beautiful work. And I, and honestly, it was a long arm quilting class, but it was just a quilting class. And literally for two days, all I did was drew on paper and just you know sketched and just did it over and over and over again and I think that you know the last episode that we had dropped people were like you really like talking about quilting and I was like yeah I really do it's kind of fun um so but I was thinking about well do people understand how to change up a basic design to kind of make it their own and how can you do that and what are some tips for you to do that is what I was thinking okay good because I get stuck in a meander for the most part right I'm like oh I could do a square meander Ooh, right still a meander <laughs> okay so, so teach us Lynn so I was <laughs> <laughs> no pressure and no pressure there <laughs> so there are seven drawing elements base drawing elements that they when they teach people to draw they teach kind of these seven drawing elements the first one's a dot then there's a line i'm here yes. a crooked line oh <laughs> a wavy line what? a circle how's that different from a dot a dot's just a dot a circle is actually a drawn oh, okay. circle gotcha okay and a triangle okay and a square what about the dodecahedron no those are all lines. Those are made up of lines. Is it a square made up of lines? Yes, but it's it's a knowable object that people can relate to. Like you look at a block or square drawn and you go, that's a square. You don't say that's four lines drawn, you know, every 90 degrees <laughs> with 90 degree angles. <laughs> you would say it's a square, right? And a triangle is the same way kind of thing. So... Our brains think very differently. We know okay. this. Okay, <laughs> we know this. So why does that bother you? A square is a subset of a quadrangle, and it could be a rectangle. <laughs> it could be a rhombus. It could be a trapezoid. Like, it's a four-sided shape. So right. it, that yes. is how my brain works. <laughs> I am not trying to be <laughs> obstructionist. I'm just saying, like, yeah, people's brain do think that way. <laughs> People like me. <laughs> But I get I I am no, picking no. up what you're saying. <laughs> so now you so now you're combining these elements. So I combine these elements. So how do you combine these elements in ways that make it your own, right? And how can you do that? Okay. So that's what I was thinking about with this. Okay. And All your right? square is probably gonna look different from my square. My square will look different from your square, but we're gonna start with a circle. Yeah. We're going to a, we're, we're going, going to, to the a camera. spreadsheet. We're going to this camera. Okay. So, um, if you're talking about dot line, um, crooked line, wavy line, um, a circle, a triangle, and a square. Okay, that's what I meant for those drawing yep. elements. All right. So, if I start with a circle, and we do this a lot in quilting. So, we start with a circle, and we're going to make a circle. But what we do is we come in on ourselves, and we do a hook. That's pretty common. Like, a lot of people know how to do that, right? So how do I add these elements to that to make that hook my own, right? So when I come out of it, I can do a crooked line. Okay? And when I come in and do it like this, I can come out of it and do a wavy line. 
Same thing. All I'm doing is changing this just enough so that when people see it, they can see the differences in it. Or I can do a different type of wavy line and make petals. Do a different type of wavy line, and this time we'll put in the, tr the let's see, we'll do squares. But these really aren't squares in your brain, are they? They're squares. To me, it looks like a gear. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool. But so you see, I just take this basic element, and all I'm doing is thinking about how I can add different aspects to that element to give me a different look, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's all I'm saying when we're talking about sketching is take one thing that you're good at, one thing that you're good at. Like if you're good at meandering, well, what if you add a triangle? What if you add two triangles? See, to me, that now looks like a kite tail because that could be ribbon. Mm hmm so it's kind of one of those, I guess what I was trying to think about when I was, you know, doing this sketching idea is how can you take basic elements that you're used to drawing and then add more things to it? And that's what I'm talking about with sketching. Okay. So now, do you do any of that? Only like, does that challenge you beyond your so comfort zone? I don't find myself sketching like that without a specific project in mind. Oh. Uh. <laughs> See, what I do, and one of the things that Jamie Wallen talked about, and I kind of got this tip for him, although I was doing it, I didn't realize it was a tip, <laughs> is if you're a quilter, if you have a sketchbook and you start those kind of drawings, it's, he says you to, it takes 20 to 40 minutes to get a pattern into you. Right, so you need to be sketching for 20 to 40 minutes on one idea to get that so ingrained to you so that when you go to your long arm or domestic, mm -hmm. you can sketch that out. You can quilt that. And his point is, once you've learned that, then if it's in this notebook, you have then created your own book of reference. Right kind of thing. And so that I think is invaluable for you to start sketching and say, oh, okay, I really like that hook with the wavy line on the outside of it. That looks cool. That'd be cool in a kid's quilt. Let me practice that. And how do you and how do you get that meandered all over the pattern to make your own background? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you can take any element. You could take ribbon candy. You could take clams. You can take meander. You can take um uh, the McTavishing and add pebbles in it. You can take, you know, uh, wavy lines and add circles in it to give you kind of a background filler. So that's what I meant by sketching. Okay. So what were you thinking? <laughs> so when I, when <laughs> I like, sketch uh -huh. and when I doodle, it is literally three-dimensional cube shapes. Like that, <laughs> my brain is just stuck in that. It used to be philodendron vines, like vines with little heart leaves on them. Uh huh. Well, see that's and that the made same. that gave way to cubes. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'm like, I'm gonna sketch a quilt block, and then I get all aggravated because I don't have graph paper in front of me and it's not lining up. <laughs> and and I just and it bothers you if it, it does. doesn't line up. It does. I feel like I need to go in with a ruler and a straight edge, and I got to do it in pencil. I'm like, oh, she's using pen. She's committed. I was like, oh, that's 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 dangerous. <laughs> And my brain just works different. Okay, you know why I use pen? No. Because... You couldn't find a pencil? No. <laughs> no. Although I will sketch with mechanical pencils a lot. Um, but I think you can use pen, and it and it reminds you that this is a needle and thread. So be, so be mindful of where you're putting it because you don't want to take it out, and pens you can't take out. So I, it's, just a, it's just a way for me to say... One, I never lift it up. You'll notice I didn't lift it up until I was yep. giving you a new example. Because as soon as you lift it up, that's a thread break. That's I have to bury Ugh. a thread. <laughs> that's not fun. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking about the dot. I'm like, ooh, just yeah. dots are. 
I don't Hard think do. that the dot in a quilt world is... I think it turns into a circle. It's not useful. That's a drawing technique. Yeah. And all I was doing was taking drawing elements and saying, okay, how can I translate that to drawing, sketching for quilting? And then how does that then translate to needle and thread, whether it's a long arm or a domestic? And I'm getting better at the domestic, by the way. I've been doing it more. I was going to ask your perspective, knowing that you typically do a long arm yes. and that when you are sketching, you are doing a motion more close to a long arm motion right. than domestic. Now, right. I I haven't had a problem transferring from one to the other. I know some people really struggle with it. I did. I do. I have to think it through because it's backwards to me. What helps me and my brain, for those of you who struggle with it, is... Mark your quilt top with the line so that you know you are you are then staying on the line. You're not drawing it. Okay. And for some reason, that helps switch that over to me. And what are you using to mark with? Like a disappearing? Oh, uh, yeah. Blue pin. Washable blue pin. Blosh washable blue pin. Yes. And I know, hey, I've seen it's really trendy lately. For people to use the Crayola washable markers, um, be careful. I just cringed a little bit. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, I know they're washable. They're washable. I also have kids that have used those. And it didn't come out. Didn't all come out. <laughs> yeah. Just be careful. I I tested the gel and didn't have success with them. Oh, well, the, um, I think the gel but stays in the The fabric. gels may stay in the fabric. Um, but and maybe the just felt tip markers are better, but just test them, please. Just test them. I'd hate for you to, you know, know you're going to give this away and it be, you know, covered in marking. Covered marking, mm, especially if you don't plan to, uh, you know, rinse it out and stuff like that. You know, some of the art quilts, I don't care. Like I know I'm going to mark over them. I know they'll yeah. never be washed. I know. You know, I don't plan to put them in the freezer. That being said, if you send it to a... And, and please explain why that's relevant, because that just can't, kind of came out of nowhere. I know you're talking about friction pins. <laughs> I don't think it's just friction pins, but... Um, so friction pins, if you... And I use them, but I'm very, I'm very judicious where I use them. Um, friction pins are, don't come out, they come out by heat, so you put an iron to it, but the, but the friction gel doesn't come out of the fabric, and how it reappears is it gets cold, and that doesn't, that's fine if you live in the south, where I live, and it really doesn't get cold enough for it to reappear, but if I sent that same quilt to a quilt show in California could reappear. And I only say that because planes fly at a different altitude than we are at. And those planes are what are carrying our quilts and they're not carrying them in, you know, air conditioned and yeah. Or heat they're resistant. They're in the cargo section. <laughs> they're in the cargo section of planes. And it can get really cold up there in the high altitudes. And even though it may be going from Atlanta to Southern California, it's got to go through the air to get there. Um, because you didn't turn it in until, you know, right before it was due. Not that this happened to me. <laughs> then you get a phone call. Did you just spin... <laughs> Cindy, I'm like, yeah, I did. <laughs> just had it shipped off. You have to pay extra for two-day shipping, just FYI. It wasn't as much as overnight, though. That is true. <laughs> so that's what I meant by friction pins. Like, just be mindful of that. And don't put thing. your quilt in the freezer. And don't put your quilt in the freezer if you use friction pins. Or, like, or maybe ever. Just saying. Um, I can't think of why I would ever want to put my quilt in the freezer, but I'm not going to judge people if they want to. You could see a very specific use case where you have just done something very physically demanding in summer. And you want a cold quilt? And you want to be blanketed with cold. 
I feel like that could be legit here. I mean, <laughs> I know we might try that <laughs> this summer. Come like, August, Ugh. that may be necessary. So, <laughs> so that's what I meant by sculching. So you wouldn't do that. And then I think it's a good idea to create your own. Go get a sketchbook. Okay, this is your your mission if you choose to all accept of the, it. All of my notebooks have <laughs> lines drawn on them. Notebook nope, paper, graph nope, paper. No, it has to be plain. <laughs> I'm getting you this for Christmas now. <laughs> I already got your Christmas present. It's not that. It's not graph paper either, though. Don't worry. <laughs> I like graph paper. I don't have anything against graph paper. Other than me using it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying to get you out of your box of sketching. My red is very comfortable. <laughs> go get a notebook do you find that no you go paper. back and kind of trace over when you're ready to use that design absolutely again? it's a good idea especially anytime you go before you get on the long arm do you i will finger, trace use it a stylus? using a finger is fine sometimes i just redraw it yeah just to with a pen or something that i'm conscious of i'm not lifting up and sometimes it's I got to figure it out, right? Because if you're doing that orange peel, you got to figure out the path. Yeah. Before you go back. Oh, okay. That's how it works. That's how you do that. Yeah. You got to travel around. You can't just like make a peel and be like, ta da. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> how do I get anywhere. to this other one? <laughs> yeah. There's a path to that. So, but yeah. Get a notebook. No. Okay. Here's my challenge to you get a notebook, no lines. And then. Take one page per design and then figure out how many different ways you can change that design. How many different ways can you change a meander? And if you're drawing it and if you're creating it, you own it because you have now gone through the creative process to do it. And that makes you a better quilter because you've gone through that process. So, and it's not that you can't look at ideas and stuff. Totally do that. I do that all the time. But you draw it in your hand. And then don't judge it of, well, it's not as good as the way so-and-so drew it or whatever. Yeah. No, no, no. You just do it and do that one element for 20 to 40 minutes while you're watching whatever on TV. I'm getting ready to binge a new show. <laughs> whatever on TV. <laughs> and... Then you then that's all you do that night. Next night, take a different one. 20 to 40 minutes. Pretty soon you'll have that notebook filled with all the different designs that you're gonna then own and be able to recreate on a quilt. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so where you were doodle do or doodle don't. Leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode, or even in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by InMart and QT Fabrics. Find links to these wonderful companies in the show notes for today's episode. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Thing Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on notifications on YouTube. The next virtual stitch-in is Friday, December 13th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. We're changing up a book club format, so stay tuned for a special broadcast in that fourth Friday slot. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase fan gear, quilt patterns, video classes. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.